Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. A week ago, I posted my Spaceman helmet build and told you that you get to decide how I finish it, and it was pretty overwhelming what you wanted to see. Uh, over 50% voted on the rusted post-apocalyptic style. So what I am gonna do is do a few different techniques, some that I've done before, some that I haven't, and kind of mash them together and hopefully come up with a end result that looks pretty awesome. Yeah. I did take some suggestions from the comments. Uh, one person had said to make a box that was for radio transmissions or something like that. I, I kind of ran with that and made a little box in the back and kind of stuck it on there and it was for radiation uh, since this is post-apocalyptic. And I, I did a couple other things to it that I hope you guys will appreciate. So today we are going to finish our Spaceman helmet. Let's get to painting, building, finishing, something. Ah. Normally you see cuts to the end result, but I thought I would show you a little bit more into the process of my prop making. Because of that, this video is a little bit longer than normal. Let's start with a base coat of paint. I mix silver with some browns and blacks to get a dirty metal effect. Then I put a clear coat over all of it. While my paint is drying outside, time to look for parts. Though they look like chaos, each toad is somewhat organized. I have a three by six foot storage container outside with a bunch of these totes in it. I pull random things that I think look cool or that I could arrange into something that makes sense, kind of getting a game plan by freestyling it. Another super fun step that gets skipped in most videos, masking. I want to keep the octagon visor, that aged metal look. The rest needs a bit of color, so I'm masking off with this blue tape. It is the cheapest one that I think you can possibly get, and that's why it sucks. I bought it in bulk online, and I'm trying to work my way through it so I can get some better masking tape.
since this is going to be post-apocalyptic, it needs to have some paint chipping. So I am using the old toothpaste technique where you mask off blotches with toothpaste. Um, it works great and leaves props smelling minty fresh. Most things left in the elements stain, discolor, or accumulate dirt. So to simulate years of this in a few minutes, I'm spraying a mixture of yellows, oranges, and browns for the bulk of the helmet, and then greens and browns for the face mask part. I hold the spray cans a little further away than normal to disperse out the paint and help me blend colors together. I did a second masking to lay down another color that's the black you see here. Notice how the toothpaste areas start to come off with the tape. Once I got all the tape off, I scrubbed off the rest of the toothpaste with a chip brush and some paper towels. I need to grime up this uneven paint job even more, really focusing on pushing the paint into the cracks and edges. I also went ahead and colored all the rivets silver, then I dragged a dry brush of silver across some of the edges to simulate scratches.
I got these sheets of colored film on Amazon and it's going to act as my lenses for the helmet. A lot of you liked the green tint I added to the thumbnail of the previous build so I ran with that color scheme. I just cut out some octagon shapes and hot glued them in. Don't know that it's the safest idea but instead of waiting five minutes for my glue gun to warm up I hit it with a torch. Instead of building all these parts, I just piece them together with random things that I hoard. Since it's my own creation, it doesn't really have to be logical or practical. I drew a lot of inspiration for this finishing parts from Halo, Destiny, Fallout, Borderlands, Mass Effect, those type of games. It's important to note that if you're going to make connections with two parts and they're already painted, you need to sand off or at least rough up those areas to get a good connection. If not, the second that helmet bends or heats up a little bit, the part's going to pop right off. Here I am adding some 45 degree angle PVC connectors to hold my hoses. My hoses are just old shower head cords. I'm not saying that you should become a hoarder, but you'd be surprised what you can repurpose while prop making. Here I am adding some random wires to areas to make it seem like the radiation box is functional. Uh, just like the foam and other parts, adding a little bit of brown and black spray paint can make any object look used.
I bought a big pack of EL wires with battery packs and am trying to find uses for them. To give a little glow around each octagon, I am looping a circle and gluing it in place. Super glue didn't really work so well, so I switched to hot glue. And here's a nice tip. If you turn a air can upside down, it lets out a burst of cold liquid that will instantly freeze hot glue. Just try not to, you know, freeze your hand with it. Normally I use Modern Master's Rust Effect, but it takes several hours to apply each step. Instead I thought I would expedite the process and use some Folk Art Painted Finish. They have like this grit in the mixture of the paint that simulates the rust effect. To add a little bit of spice to my paint job, literally, I sprinkled turmeric over the wet paint to finish off that rust texture. And we are finished. Here is the end result. I definitely think it stands out as a unique space helmet build. Uh, a few things I want to point out just so you're, you're clear on what exactly I did in the, the second video. Added hoses and wires, added this little box in the back for radiation detection, and made sure that it was good and weathered and uh, shockingly high all the time. Uh, then I ran a couple of random wires, and after wiring the lights for the inside, I forgot that I was supposed to rust it. Uh, so instead of doing the usual one where I use the Modern Masters rust effect, uh, it's a three-part mix. You've seen it in a lot of the builds that I've done. Uh, I decided to try a different route, so I went with some Folk Art rusted paint finish. Uh, and basically it's it's acrylic paint with like a texture medium in it which kind of gives it that roughness that you would expect out of rust and just to give it a little bit more contrast and that powdery um, texture that you get from rust over time I decided to throw in some turmeric um, you could find any spice basically that has a kind of an orangish or yellowish color to it to kind of kick it off and make it a little bit powdery so that it looks like rust on the surface. The only problem or downside with using turmeric is um, kind of stains your hands a little bit. So maybe find one that isn't 
hand staining, which I don't know that that's going to work, but they do make um, powders and things for this specific use that you could use. And I was just kind of going with the fly and finding something that I had in my kitchen that I could use. Yeah. Maybe you will try and make this space helmet yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to paint something that was black into something that is now really, really old looking. Maybe you'll get some... Yay! And inevitably, they're going to ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these. Tell them, much props. we got to turn the lights on. And shove my big head in it. Peace out.